So, uh, some of you, uh, let's see if we can recreate the integrity conversation out of uh, 101. Uh, Randy, get us started with that. So, like, what's the first thing we know about integrity? What are the definitions that we use? Um, he had two pieces of pie, he may not be able to answer this. The, <laughs> well, that, um, yeah, that we need to be um, people who uh, are able and willing to give our word to things and um, and then when we recognizing that we're going to um, need to at times as we fail in what we've given our word to clean up the mess that got created right. from what we give our word to and we drop the ball on. Right. And so how do we clean up our word? How do we keep our word, honor our word when we haven't kept our word? Somebody else. This is not TV. I can see you, and I can, <laughs> I can call. We don't keep our word. How do we honor our word? First of all, we admit the mess we made. Right. We take full responsibility for it. Uh -huh. We do whatever we need to do at the moment to help clean up the mess, and then we give our word again. Okay. Great. Great. And so we have two definitions, two working definitions in integrity. One of them is that we do what we say we'll do, when we say we'll do it, and we do it in a manner that is meant to be done. Now the other thing that we do is that we talk about integrity being workability. Uh, I, I, it was a really powerful moment for me in the weekend retreat a week ago after a number of us had participated in the 301 weekend retreat. When we got to that part of the definition where we said workability is about living within the design, and Tricia got me to pause and she said, so I think it's really important that we stop there and, and think about the design, think about that there's a design for us as human beings, there's a design for marriage, and then she pointed to some people in the room, there's a design for you know, how, how corps are supposed to run, there's a design for how real estate businesses are supposed to run, how dental law, there's a design for everything that we do in life. And it's really important for us as faith walkers to actually, if we're gonna be agents of reconciliation and instruments of shalom, it's really important that we um, actually have some vision of what the design is so that we know what we're restoring to, right? So, uh, in that context, faith walking has a design. And in our staff meeting today, uh, the workability thing, faith walking will work if we work the design. Um, and in the, in the staff meeting today, Marcus said, I think it's really important that you review the process with them. And so, um, so look at the handout. Did everybody get a handout? Bob, you didn't get one. And Joe, <coughs> Betty didn't get one. Yeah. Um, so there's really four pieces just to the process for coaching to work. Um, and I want to be sure these are really clear in your head, all right? So here's what happens. We just finished the 101, and when we finish the 101, Marcus generates an email, and it goes to everybody in the coaching community, and it says, we're about ready to uh, start another round of 101, 201, and we need to know if you can coach. You might be surprised, you might not, but you might be surprised at how many people simply don't respond to those emails. The design doesn't work when you don't respond to the email. It's really okay for you to say no. It's, it's really okay for you to say, I can't coach right now. But the, the process doesn't work if you don't just respond to the email and say what you can or can't do. So that's the first part of the process. The second part is that if you agree to coach, then this is kind of a new piece. And so if you're, if you're a, a long time coach, you may not have participated in one of these yet. But uh, the second thing is that once the coaches are assigned, the facilitator, I'm facilitating a 201 right now, the facilitator takes initiative to schedule a conference call with the coaches. And what we're working on is simply uh, making sure that as, as breakdowns occur in the coaching process or if breakdowns occur in the 201 meeting, that there's a conversation, a relationship already established and we, we kind of know how we're going to back and forth be in, in communication with one another. That's, a, that's a, at least no more than a one hour call. The third thing is that once every six weeks, once every six weeks, uh, you uh, get an email from Marcus and it simply asks you as a coach to take about two minutes is really what it could to click on a, a survey monkey. It'll open up and it'll have all the people that you're coaching. It'll have everybody who's being coached and it'll ask you for attendance for did they make the coaching call. And you bundle in one or two or three names, that's all it takes. And then you get complete, and you send and you send that off, and that gives us uh, a record. And then the fourth thing is, uh, 
and this is a new piece if you've been coaching for a while. I completed a 201 uh, last night, uh, and the first time when, uh, when I went to 201.12, I gave everybody who was present uh, what we call an exit interview. And it's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a form that they are given, they take it with them, they're asked to thoughtfully, prayerfully look at it. It's a place where they record what their missional community declaration is and where they ask for a, uh, a missional coach or whether they declare their intent to get, a, get their small group to become uh, a missional community or where they ask to be assigned to a missional community uh, to serve as an intern. And so the final piece of the process is that if you're coaching, you schedule a face-to-face -face meeting with the people you're coaching, and you go over that interview. Now, last night the question was raised, what if Tricia Taylor's coaching us? <laughs> because she lives in Austin. Yeah. And I said, mm -hmm. work that out with Tricia. Yeah. Whatever y'all decide is okay. So that's the design of the process. What we're not saying is that the design is perfect. As it goes along, we may discover that we need to revise the design. But the way we know that the design needs to be revised, the design needs to be revised, is if we're working the design and then produce the results that we want. So that's just a purely an informational thing. Um, is that clear? Are there any questions about that? Is it helpful for you to hear that, Lori? He had his hand raised first. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, we'll let the ladies go first. Um, a couple of things. One about the facilitator and the call uh -huh. with the facilitator initiates. Is that call an ongoing call? Or is that one time. time. It's a one time, one hour call mm -hmm. so that the relationship is established. And that way, if you're coaching and you need to be in communication mm -hmm. with your facilitator, mm -hmm. something breaks down in your coaching and you want some help from that. Okay, you know. but that's not the same as our head coach who's over No, us. no. That's a, different, that's a different conversation. Okay. We're going to have that conversation later. Because Melanie's both my head coach and my facilitator. So, uh, so I can see how that might be confusing to you. Those are two <laughs> different calls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Lauren. Um, just curious, are you kind of indicating here that, like I've never heard anybody say this, but they're expecting uh, 201 to show up 9 out of 12 times? Yes. And so since we're taking attendance right. as a teacher, my curiosity is, are we expecting 9 out of 12 or, or you know, the, the same ratio there? Or are we all just wanting to get feedback on no. whether or not they're missing? No, we have, a pretty cool, we have a very clear guideline that if you miss more than three <coughs> sessions, uh, you can keep coming, but you don't get credit for having finished two or one. This is on the coaching call. Oh, that's what I'm asking. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, well, there actually is no written stipulation about how many coaching calls you can miss. Uh, you have to decide what becomes pattern. You know, if they if they miss every call, if they miss every other call, if they miss every third call. I mean, people are going to miss calls. They have breakdowns. They uh, but we have an agreement about what happens if they miss a call, uh, that they take responsibility for being in communication with you, rescheduling all that. Uh, and so there's no, there's no, they get kicked out if they don't make a certain number of calls. Would you say anything else about that? No, I, I think uh, reviewing the coaching agreement for both the coach and the coachee is a good place to start because it does say if you're going to miss, there's a way to clean up the mess and still be responsible for the homework. Um, so. Well, can I ask then too, as far as that is concerned, if there's the nine out of twelve sessions, and if they only come to eight of the twelve, right. but they're still going to the sessions, yeah. they're not getting credit. They're still doing the coaching calls. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I had a guy this time who, when he missed the fourth time, I called him and I said, "It's a hard conversation to have. I didn't have this with you." And uh, he said, "Yeah, I know." He said. He said, I suck at organization. That's what he said. <laughs> I suck at organization. He's about, a, he's about a 28, 29 year old guy. And he said, uh, he said, if it's okay, I want to keep coming. And I said, that's great. I said, yeah. but really the only thing is you can't get credit, which you, you have, need to have credit if you ever want to be a coach or one of the, uh, 201 is the gateway to all the other stuff we do. And, uh, and he kept coming and kept making his coaching calls. He was there last night, finished out with us. Actually, if you have 12 <coughs> sessions, you're supposedly going to have 24 right. coaching calls. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What other questions do you have? So, I'm laughing because I'm at my other one. Who's the 201 for Sutter? Is that like Steve? Whoever leads that, that 201. Yeah, yeah. Steve yeah. or me. Yeah. Or, <laughs> right now, the, the 201 facilitators are Steve and me and Marcos and Ken Schumann, Bob Newey, 
think you're about to start doing some of that. Um, Amy, Amy Wood has just finished training to do that. Uh, Dale and Melanie do uh, some of that. That's what the facilitator is. Oh. It's whoever's doing the every other week. <coughs> yeah. Okay? So, so I want you to have a conversation with a partner. And here's the conversation I want you to have. Um, for this to work, we've got to work the design. And we're not working the design. I don't know what it would be. Is it 80%, 85%, 90%? Uh, how, um, so, so I always struggle with how do you have a conversation about that, about being heavy-handed or judgmental or controlling, while also just acknowledging that there is a design and it, does, it just it becomes less and less and less efficient the, the, the less we work the design. What I'd like for you to do is to turn to a partner and say what's in the space for you about this conversation. And then rather than everybody kind of recommitting to giving their word to working with them the design, just say to your partner that you're going to commit to doing that. And if you're not willing to commit to doing that, say that and have a conversation with them. Two simple reasons.